Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 3.05. And really up until now, I think everything we've covered has been very logical. Everything has made a lot of sense. Whether that's been from the foundations, talking about sound, which in and of itself is quite abstract, to doing our DJing, to stretching our full tracks, putting things on the grid, to even now these last few videos where we've been talking about just sort of navigating in this software and getting comfortable moving around. Luckily, we only have to cover this stuff once, and then hopefully you really get a handle on it and you can just dive in and do what you want to do. That's kind of the point of these videos. So in this video, we're going to be talking about audio clips versus audio events and some simple like automation moves you can make inside of audio clips, which is different from automation that happens inside the arranger. Really, this is the point where things go a little ham, they go a little crazy, and honestly, I still don't understand the total logic to everything that we're about to be covering, not only in this video, but in the next few videos as well. A lot of these parameters and functions are what make Bitwig quite unique, but sometimes being so unique can get you into trouble, and I think in a few cases here, you're gonna find that you're scratching your head as to why certain things happen. But let's just go ahead, jump into it, and like always, feel free to leave comments below. So what we have here are all clips, right? And I can take my clip, I can lengthen it out, right, until it gets to be the full length, and then it's gonna start over and it's going to um, start looping for me. And now if I wanted, I could change this loop length, and you see more and more loops are coming in, and I can uh, pull this out and I can start making additional loops whatever, it's all pretty simple, okay? Now, where this starts to get a little bit more interesting is when I double click on one of these and I bring up the audio editor, all right? You can also access this by clicking the E button. Right now, what we see is pretty much identical, top to bottom. If I zoom this out, if I match it to quarter notes, let's pull this back. This one is in, currently an adaptive and this one isn't. If I pull this back to quarter notes and then I really kind of zoom out and try to line these guys up, it's uh, pretty much identical. Okay, if I play back from here, I play back from up here, we're gonna see the transport uh, bar moving. Let me just put on my headphones. All right, we're even looping in there. Now, where this gets kind of interesting is that you have two choices from the editor page. You can either edit in the arranger, which we're doing right now, or we can actually edit the content of individual clips. So let's click on that one for a second. And now you've noticed right away it's changed to 111. And the clip we're actually looking at is this one, I believe, or now it's this one. It's the one that's highlighted. And so I can move between my different clips, but they're all gonna be positioned at that 111 point. So let's work with this one here, okay? And I'm going to make sure that I loop this section. I still have to do that. And now I'm gonna be playing back. In the arranger, you see we have just this little section, but down here, when we're editing the clip, we have the full thing, and that's because we haven't consolidated this out at all. So I'm gonna take this nine real quick, delete it, go back to my 10, and I could pull this out, okay? And so it's matching what we have down here in the clip view, if you can see that, hopefully you can. Um, now if I wanted to, what I could do is I could take this clip and I could consolidate it, and now we're seeing pretty much the same thing. So if I play back. Great, right? Um, a few things I can do in here unique to clip editing, and I can do this from either this view or from the um, arranger view inside of the editor, is I can make some of these changes. If I go to event, there's nothing I can do to change it, and we're just seeing the individual audio event, okay? Now, if I mess with gain, what it's going to do is within this particular event, it's going to adjust, it's going to make the change. And you can see it happening visually. If I boost it way up, you can see that both up here and down here. So if I bring it down, now we can listen to it. 
But note, the volume isn't changing. This isn't automation. If I go in here and I look for automation, it's not gonna be there. So this is pretty much unique to the clip. It's not destructive unless we consolidate it. So let's consolidate this one more time. And actually it doesn't even make a destructive edit to it. Very interesting. If we were to bounce it though, let's bounce in place, then it would. And we're gonna talk about the bouncing features um, in just a couple of videos. So I can adjust the pan as well if I wanted to do that. So let's just make a, uh, a big old sweep here. I also have control over pitch. So maybe we want to drop the pitch a little bit in the second segment. That's pretty cool. Our next feature are our onsets, and we'll talk more about these in a minute. Bitwig attempts to pick up onsets in these files. So what it's trying to do is find transients. It's trying to find peaks in the signal, and it's done an okay job, but it's obviously missed one at the very beginning, and it's missed one right here. If I wanna create my own, I can double click, and it should create one for me. To move it, I can select it and just drag left and right. And don't forget, you can use the shift button to get it exactly where you want it to be. Okay, these are not stretch markers though. So if I take these if I take these and I move them around, it's not moving any of the data inside of this particular um, audio event. That's where it changes with stretch. And we've obviously seen stretch and we've talked about using stretch um, to put things on the grid. Right here, this is pretty much totally lined up. But if I wanted to go um, a little bit crazy here, I could, and I could take a portion of this. I'm just gonna move these guys out of the way here for a second so I can get some more space. And now if I double click and I drag out, I can make these big changes. So now let's take a listen to that. And one of the reasons I'm showing you this is because if we take our clip now and we copy it, we go into our uh, scene launcher, get rid of that, and we paste it, it's going to bring over all of those changes. So if I play it from here, same effect. And now I could shorten the clip and just get it looping right here. Even shorter. And the big takeaway from this is that this isn't automation, okay? Automation isn't occurring. These are all changes within the clip. We're not gonna see any little blue dots, okay? So even though there's change over time, it's changes we're making to the audio event itself. And so if we copy and paste, it copies and pastes those over, but not as automation, just as data going on inside of the event. So let's go back to our arrangement view here so I can show you guys some stuff going on. You can see that if we have the gain selected, it doesn't go over time. It stops at the end of each clip that we have. So if I change this one and maybe I want this one to start out quieter and get a little bit louder, and then I want this one to be starting a little louder and then going quieter, we can go back and play that back and listen. Oops, I'm sorry, I have my loop going there. Right, from our DJ videos, let's not forget that we need to click the back to arrangement view, but sometimes I don't even remember to do that. So um, that's pretty much the difference between these two different views. And I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you. This is a very confusing sort of element to Bitwig Studio that you're not gonna see in anything else because these are very unique to clips. And when we actually bring in an instrument, we actually have some other unique things that we can do specifically to the MIDI data going on um, if we're using one of Bitwig's built-in devices. And we'll cover that in a ways, but for now, I just want you to understand the difference that you can go in, edit individual clips, 
and that's a little bit different from making automation changes up here in the arrangement timeline. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in the next lesson.